A pleasant sea voyage from Vancouver brings the traveller to Vancouver Island. While the large cities like Victoria and Nanaimo have their attractions, driving north on Highway 19 will reveal some of the island's lesser-known treasures. One of these treasures can be discovered in the village of Cumberland, located in the beautiful Comox Valley. The village used to be the centre of the island's coal mining industry. The local museum preserves many interesting artefacts and photographs from those days. Today the coal mines are only history, but a few steps from Cumberland's museum you'll find Cumberland United Church. Inside is an artefact of great interest to musicians, a pipe organ dating from the last quarter of the 19th century. This little gem of an instrument was built in London, England, by Alfred Hunter. Here you see the builder's plate, reading A. Hunter, 379 Kennington Road. The firm built many organs for English churches as well as for export to the British colonies. The three-manual, 47-stop organ at All Souls, Langham Place, was considered Alfred Hunter's showpiece. Cumberland's organ is one of the firm's smaller instruments. It was built for St. Paul's Naval and Garrison Church in Esquimalt, B.C. After construction in London, it was taken apart, packed in boxes and shipped around the southern tip of South America to the new colony of British Columbia. In 1911, St. Paul's was enlarged and then a larger organ was needed. The Alfred Hunter organ was offered for sale and purchased by St. George's Presbyterian Church in Courtney, now St. George's United Church. In the mid-40s, St. George's purchased a Hammond organ and donated the Alfred Hunter to Cumberland United Church. The congregation is to be commended for taking such good care of this historic instrument. The large wooden pipes you see at either side of the instrument are those of the pedal's 16-foot stopped flute. There is also a pedal-to-manual pull-down coupler. The metal pipes you see at the front are those of the 8-foot open diapason. There are more rows of them behind the facade, making a total of 56 pipes, one for each note of the manual. The other manual ranks are enclosed in a swell box. A hitched down foot pedal, placed rather awkwardly at the far right side of the pedal board, allows the player to open and close the shutters enclosing the swell box. You can see that the swell shutters are lined with strips of Axminster carpet to better insulate the sound when the shutters are closed. The wooden pipes inside the box are the 8 foot stop diapason. The metal ranks are the 4-foot principal and the 2-foot 15th, as well as an 8-foot dulciana from tenor C and a 4-foot flute, making a total of 6 manual stops. The ranks are brought into play by pulling the stop knobs just above the keyboard. There used to be three preset pedals just above the pedal board. They permitted the organist to quickly call into play ranks providing pianissimo, mezzo forte and forte levels of sound. The Cumberland organ is mechanical in action. Trackers constructed of wood connect the keys to the pipe valves. At one time a manual bellows filled the reservoir with air. Now an electric blower has been installed to supply the air pressure. Let's listen to these pipes constructed by Alfred Hunter in 1878 as Alistair Hyatt of Lanceville plays a recital recorded in October of 2013. It should be noted that Alistair's recital, originally burned onto a DVD, has now been recorded off a widescreen television. This makes the views and the player appear wider than in real life. Still, I think you'll agree it's worthwhile listening to this historic instrument. 